All human being activities uh, and well-being are, are directly associated with water. And in particular, Johannesburg, we are in a very, very unique position because we are the only city in the world that's not on a river, not on a lake, or not on a seafront. Mm -hmm. We happen to straddle a continental watershed divide. And that opens up a whole lot of challenges for the city of Johannesburg in particular. No doubt water is the source of life, which is why the UN wants to create this awareness so that we can preserve this natural resource, use it wisely. But is it measurable in terms of how much of traction this awareness campaign on World War Today is gaining? Well, I, I think the UN plays a very important role in getting a global consensus, if you like. And this year, the theme is wastewater, how to recover and recapture and recycle wastewater. Now, this is very important because ultimately the future of mankind Mm -hmm. uh, as our population grows and outstrips our, our resource availability on planet Earth, we are going to increasingly have to start recycling. So countries, for example, like Singapore, uh, like Namibia, for example, are fairly far advanced in the recycling of water. Uh, uh, we have not yet begun to do that. So the fact that, that, that the United Nations has chosen this wastewater as, as this new resource, I think is very responsible because it talks about living within our means, if you like, and ultimately uh, capturing water, cascading water around your economy uh, for different purposes and different prices, different values. Let's talk about urban areas, urban cities like Je the city of Johannesburg, for example. What are some of the challenges around enhancing that awareness, creating that awareness, so people can become more passionately aware about the need to preserve water and the importance of this resource? Here, everything's about deadlines. So, you know, it's probably you see the billboards, preserve water, and you do your best. But there isn't yes. that passion for it. What needs to be done in cities like Johannesburg? I think what we need to under, uh, understand is that uh, our relationship, our well-being, our very well-being as an individual or as a group, as a nation, uh, is dependent on water availability. And I'll just give you a number, for example. Every human being in South Africa mm -hmm. produces, on average, about 100 litres of waste water every day. So that's 100 litres of water that goes down the sewer somewhere. We've got 50 million people. So 50 million people times 100 litres of wastewater a of is water. a substantial amount of water. Mm. So as we start unrolling technologies uh, to recover that, it's very important. But more importantly is the social change. Singapore, for example, recycles all of its water. It calls it new water. It's not called wastewater. It's called new water. And it spent most of its budget not on the purchase of technology, but on behavioral change, so, um, uh, media uh, programs to ultimately uh, get people to change their behavior. Well, we're just coming out of a drought. We've had that in terms of media campaigns to drive the awareness coming through from different authorities around preserving water during the drought. Do you think that concretized a behavioral shift? Was that enough? Personally, I don't think so, because people generally are uninterested in water. They don't really care about it. And so the fact that Valdam is now full, what we forget is that the city of Johannesburg, just six months ago, had one week of water left. Just think about that. So we dodged the bullet in such a way one week ago. Now, where is that knowledge other than within a few, a handful of technical specialists? Mm -hmm. We need to understand just how close we are to, to uh, an unpleasant outcome. And, and it doesn't have to be an unpleasant outcome. But it all depends on our attitude. So our attitude ultimately has to be to embrace the fact that we are part of an ecosystem, that the water you, that you drank this morning when you cleaned your teeth went through a dinosaur's kidney 63 million years ago, and water has constantly been re recycled. If we respect it, if we become stewards for it, if we adopt the stewardship kind of custodial initiative, if you like, then we've actually got a very, very good future ahead of us. But if we ignore it, if we abuse it, I'm afraid then the outcome is not going to be so pretty. There were punitive measures in place during the drought in a city like Johannesburg. Do you think that should be an ongoing policy? What I've seen from the punitive measures was that uh, they generally backfired. They had a negative uh, unintended consequence. And what the unintended consequence was, uh, uh, on the one hand, it has driven the private sector to simply look after their own interests. Uh, so effectively, the state has lost control of that portion of the water cycle as a result of those initiatives. Now, this I don't think is a desirable outcome, but it's an, un uh, it's an inevitable outcome. What it's also done is it's going to continue to drive the, uh, the, the very visible disparity between, between rich and poor, between haves and have-nots in South Africa. This is something that we have to actively guard against. So on the one hand, you've got this negative outcome, but on the other hand, we've got 
the, the very, very strong need to have to do something. So I think what we need to do is depoliticize water. That's the important thing, firstly. Let's make water a technical issue. Let's make water a social issue. Water is the one thing that unites all kinds of communities. Uh, it is far too important to fight over. It is, it is therefore in our vested interest to actually unite over managing that resource. And ultimately, if we start understanding that we, we have to enter a recycling future, if we have policy response to that effect, because we don't yet have policies in place for that, as soon as we have a policy response that's adequate, there are literally hundreds of technologies out there that are available to, uh, uh, to come in. And that, uh, that also requires uh, some degree of investment. So the question is, will the state invest? Will it be public money or will the private sector invest? That's a very important distinction to make because I, I personally don't see that the state has the capacity to invest. They simply don't have the resources anymore. Therefore, it comes down to a policy choice about a public-private partnership. How do you regulate the otherwise potentially voracious consumption appetite from the private sector? How do we get that together with the, with the need to bring technologies? How do we make the space investable? Sure. That's really what it's about.